The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and good day, everyone. Um, it's almost 1 p.m., so we'll just wait for a few more attendees to log on, and then we'll begin our webinar today on polar bears for every season. I hope you're looking forward to it. Speak very soon. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time of the day. It is 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. My name is Natasha Colley. I am an Arctic travel specialist with Arctic Kingdom. It is my pleasure to host this webinar today to discuss polar bears for every season. So let's uh, jump right into it, why don't we? Um, if you have any problems with any audio, please uh, type in the chat box and I will try to rectify the audio. Um, from my end, everything looks great. And it looks like I have a lot of people joining today. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your day for this webinar. So first and foremost, uh, we always like to discuss Arctic Kingdom and a little bit about us. So this year, we are celebrating our 18th year in business. We have been in business since uh, 1999, crafting legendary Arctic adventures since then. Um, we have a lot of film crews that work with us, a lot of individual travelers who will come and visit us. Um, we work with uh, meetings and incentive groups, um, you name it, if people are going up into the Canadian high Arctic, um, it's likely that we've uh, discussed the option with them, if not planned it. We are a global leader in the land-based travel. Uh, we also do a lot of custom experiences and getaway here um, at Arctic Kingdom in the Canadian Arctic. We truly believe that we are the pioneer of the Arctic Safari. So we have taken what is traditionally understood to be the African mobile safari and brought it right up into the high Arctic, creating um, amazing experiences for our clients. And today what we're discussing is how Arctic Kingdom offers a polar bear tour almost year round, unlike any other tour operator in the world. So we're very proud to offer a polar bear trip in every season. Our polar bear trips are offered from March to November and the opportunities for sightings are, are, like I mentioned, nearly in every season. There's a great variety of land-based polar bear trips and ice-based polar bear trips, boat-based polar bear trips. So um, any type of way that you were thinking to see a polar bear, likely we have an opportunity to do so. The accommodation styles while on our trips would be anything from a camp to a lodge to a cabin-based opportunity. So um, now we'll jump into it. Let's start discussing winter. Um, uh, we have two trips that allow us to see polar bears in the winter time. Also, this is the time of year where polar bear mothers are emerging from their dens and coming out for the season. Uh, so it's a great time of year for mother and cub photography. So the spring polar bears and icebergs of Baffin Island is the first trip that we operate in this season. It takes place in March and April. It's a nine-day, eight-night trip. It is out on the, um, on the sea ice, so we're going out every day from our camp, going out to try to see mother and cubs on the icebergs. Uh, we have very limited space available. We have space on our April 17th departure as well as some solo spots on our March uh, 27th and April 3rd departure. Um, so if this trip is something that you'd be interested in doing, please know that it's a good time to contact us. This trip takes uh, place above the Arctic Circle in the community of Kikitarjuak, um, and we travel right to the heart of Canada's high Arctic in early spring. And this is literally where few have gone before, especially at this time of year. Um, on this trip, you can anticipate getting some real cutting edge, cutting edge images, um, very rare in the industry. So uh, if you're looking for that rare photo to add to your portfolio, this would be a great trip to do so on it. The mode of transportation on this trip is that we go out daily by um, snowmobile and a traditional Inuit sled called the Kemetik, uh, which is also an adventure in itself, and that is how we get around on the sea ice at this time of year. This trip, as I mentioned, is the chance to see polar bear mothers and cubs as they roam the sea ice or climb up the majestic icebergs of the north. 
Um, and then the evening, we're going to be able to see the northern lights as we are um, given enough nighttime to be able to see them. And this image here would be a typical image of what you can capture on this trip. So you see these cute bears um, coming out of the dens with their mothers. So this offers an award-winning photography opportunity. Uh, we've run this trip now just for um, a couple years, and within those couple years, we've had two photographers uh, win some photo contests with the images that they were able to obtain. So uh, we're really proud of this newest offering at Arctic Kingdom, um, and keeping in mind that we still have space available for this spring um, if you're looking to travel with us into the high Arctic. So these next few slides are just sort of what the atmosphere of this trip would be like. Um, as you see, all the photographers have their tripod set up, and we just have this stunning image of a mother and cub up on her daybed in this iceberg. Um, so we're here shooting. We could possibly be able to shoot this bear with our cameras for a good hour or two. This image right here is a great image of the mother and the and a small set of cubs. Very cute. So we also offer the polar bear mother and newborn cub photo safari uh, at this time of year. Um, we are sold out for 218 and we're already selling into 2019. Um, it's a, we have very limited space on this opportunity, so do contact us if you might be interested in booking on this one. Um, this trip this year will be taking place on March 13th, and year after year that tends to be the week that we do this. We have this opportunity available. We would have our guests fly into um, Winnipeg for this one and then transfer over in Churchill. Um, and, and then we, from there, go on to the Polar Bear Mother and Cubs Lodge. And the lodge is located um, in one of, the, of Canada's largest denning habitats, known as Wapusk National Park. The objective of this trip is really to see the mother and cubs emerging from their den. So with the last photo, um, we may or may not get the emergence from the den, but this trip in particular is really focused on that activity of the bear. Uh, we utilize a unique track heated vehicle on this trip, so it's not as cold as the other opportunity, um, but we are not on the tundra as we are on the spring bears opportunity we're actually on the taiga so you'll notice especially in this image here that there's shrubbery in the background so depending on the type of photos that you're looking for um, this may or may not be the opportunity for you therefore maybe spring bears is if you're looking for a lot more ice and iceberg snow in your imagery this trip because of the time of year as well will also offer those beautiful northern lights now let's swiftly move into the spring and the spring is this time of year known as the quintessential time to travel into the Canadian high Arctic, also known as the flow edge season. Now what the flow edge is, is um, it's land fast ice that when it recedes back it creates a shoreline known as the flow edge and it's an area where um, food is abundant. There's a high concentration of animals here such as polar bears and narwhal and they come to the flow edge to feed. So it's a very reliable place for us to take our clients um, to see the narwhal and polar bears during the period of May, late May and early June um, year after year. And we have two trips that run concurrently and that are the narwhal and polar bear safari out of Pond Inlet as well as the great migrations of the Northwest Passage out of Arctic Bay. Both of these camps are um, above the Arctic Circle. They are on the top of Baffin Island on the um, East Coast, where there's lots of mountains and cliff drops. We are utilizing our premium safari camp on ice. So throughout the trip, we will always be on the ice, about 10 feet of ice throughout the week. It's a very exciting adventure. Um, Although it sounds risky, it is a safe, it is safe. The Inuit have been doing this for thousands and thousands of years in order to harvest um, in the springtime. Um, so we utilize and hone into their knowledge, take our clients out here year after year, um, enabling them to see species such as the narwhal, who's never been able to thrive in captivity, um, and the polar bear, which is um, a beautiful, majestic animal that you could see, as we mentioned, year round, but right in their home here in the springtime while they are hunting for food themselves. 
So the narwhal and polar bear safari is eight days and seven nights, and it is in May and June. And I'll discuss a bit more about this trip. Um, you know, there's 24 hours of sunshine at this time of year. It's the period known as the midnight sun. We get very vast, incredible landscapes on these trips, including icebergs and ice caves. There's lots of sea ice. There's lots of beautiful mountains, as I mentioned, but also there's a lot of opportunity to see um, buried bird species and um, seals. It wouldn't be out of the box to see walrus and bowhead on this trip, as well as the narwhal and the polar bears. Here is an image of us traveling via the traditional Inuit sled, Kemutik with an igloo tuck, pulled by a snowmobile, which is driven by one of our local Inuit guides. Um, so this is just a great image of what to anticipate while traveling on the trip. Here is an image of a polar bear at the flow edge. So you see that there's lots of birds around. There's typically a lot of birds in most images. And then depending on the angle that you will get, you can take pictures of the polar bear with the mountains in the background. Perhaps you would get a polar bear swimming. I have images myself from my trip of, you know, polar bear feeding on the narwhal that it has caught. Um, so just a vast variety of um, of behavior you'll find on this trip with the polar bears. Um, I love this image because uh, the scale in the Arctic is always very hard to capture with a uh, camera and it works well when you put it next to something that you can sort of see the scale in relation. So these icebergs in the Arctic are just massive and they really become part of the splendor of the entire journey. Now, Great Migrations of the Northwest Passage, it is uh, very similar to the narwhal and polar bear. It's just a little bit more further north. We're still utilizing a premium safari camp on ice. Um, and I will be showing a few more images of the accommodation a little later in the presentation in case you're curious. Um, so a very similar trip. Now, the differences of this trip would actually be the possibility to see um, beluga. So on the narwhal and polar bear, we were seeing narwhal polar bear reliably. On this trip, we've been very fortunate to see reliable beluga as well. So if this is a species of whale that you would like to see in conjunction with the narwhal and polar bear, uh, we would certainly point you towards the great migrations of the Northwest Passage. Another difference of this trip would be that um, on great migrations out of Arctic Bay, the landscape is just a little bit more dramatic. There's, the mountains are a bit more big. The cliff drops are just really dramatic here. There's not very many cliffs and pond inlet. Um, so if landscape is something that is very important to you, as well as taking images of these animals, um, great migrations would be the flow edge opportunity within the spring in the midnight sun that we would direct you to. But both opportunities are both incredible, offering a very similar experience. Now this image here I really enjoy. This is later in the season. So from May into June, um, the temperatures are rapidly increasing. So in our May and our early June departures, you will notice a lot of snow and ice in your backdrops. Now this would be probably on our June 12th, 13th departures. So the snow is starting to melt off of the mountains. We're starting to get brown mountains. And this reflection that you're seeing below, it looks like it's in water. Um, it is in water, but it's not the open ocean. What it is, it's the melt water above the ice. So it, it really works in imagery um, to be able to show the, the mountains above. So playing with your camera on this trip could be quite fun. We offer kayaking and snorkeling on our flow edge safari. So we'll take out the kayaks every day to the flow edge. And when the opportunity presents itself, uh, we get right into the water. The Arctic Ocean is extremely calm and uh, it's a very nice place to do some paddling. Um, and then we also do this snorkeling as well. So for the adventurous who would like to get in and into a dry suit and get into the water, we certainly offer that every day when we go to the flow edge as well. Now, as the temperatures are warming up, we're moving into the summertime. So summer is still a great time to see polar bears. Polar bears don't um, hibernate like other bears that we are, you know, we're more familiar with where they are sleeping for their hibernation period. Polar bears do hibernate in a sense where they're sort of in a, a walking, 
a walking hibernation. So they're kind of moseying around throughout the summertime, picking and feeding on berries and shrubs um, and whatever type of food they can get throughout the summer. Uh, but these are the bears that we see. So in the summertime, we can see them swimming. We can see them traversing along cliff sides. Um, we can see them on beaches. So there's varying um, areas that we can see them throughout, including being on an ice floe floating by, which we have seen many times before. So our first trip of the season is our Kings of the Arctic Safari. And this is a seven-day, six-night opportunity out of Igloo Lick, which is on the east coast of Baffin Island. The east coast of Baffin Island is quite different from the, or the west coast of Baffin Island is quite different from the east coast. The east coast, which we were discussing for our spring and winter opportunities, has more of a mountainous landscape. On the west coast of Baffin Island, where this trip takes place in Igloolik, it's a lot more flat. There's a lot more ice flows. So it's a it's very different. So if you have been to the east side of Baffin Island, we recommend um, considering this trip to get that varying landscape. We are in a tented safari camp on this trip rather than the premium safari camp. And a tented safari camp is just, just a bit of a smaller tent, although it is in my experience, just as comfortable. And because we're no longer able to be on the sea ice, we bring our camp onto the land. Every day we go out and we explore by boat on this trip. Um, so you have to be okay with being on the boat for an extended period of time. Um, but we get a great opportunity to see walrus on this trip. We have a lot of bowhead activity, especially on the first of the two departures would be stronger for bowhead. Um, and then we'll get anywhere from three to five polar bears in the week as well. A lot of the times they're swimming on this trip or they're floating on the, on the ice. We sometimes also get a flow edge opportunity on this trip, just depending on the seasonality. Um, so it, will, it may give you the flow edge experience, such as in the spring on this summer trip. Um, it is still 24 hours of sunlight, the midnight sun on this trip. Here is an image of what you can anticipate, uh, image of the walrus, and this is what you can anticipate. Out of all of our trips, um, the walrus on this trip are almost 1,000% guaranteed. We typically know uh, where they're going to be, and they hang out in herds like this, or sometimes they are solo, um, but it's very easy for us to be able to approach them and get these images. So we get the polar bears on this trip. This guy, he looks a bit sad, but this is nature and this is what a true polar bear would look like. Not all of our bears in, in, on Baffin Island will look like this poor guy here, um, but it, like, it's just a wide demographic. We never know the type of bears we're going to come by, and that's all part of the adventure as well. And bowhead, as I mentioned, it's a, a great um, whale to see. It's this, uh, a whale that's kind of hard to see, but we have found that this trip offers more than any other trip uh, the best opportunity to see them. So as we progress into the summer, we have our polar bears and glaciers at Baffin Island Safari. Um, this is a really great safari for families, for people who are a little nervous that they might be cold in the Arctic, um, because this trip, the weather is really heating up. We're losing the 24 hours of daylight. We have about six hours of nighttime on this trip, um, but the temperatures could be um, up to, on my, from my experience, up to about 22 degrees Celsius, um, which I believe is about 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but something in that range, it's a very comfortable trip. It does take place above the Arctic Circle. We're going to the community of Kikitarjuak, and if you remember from the beginning of the presentation, Kikitarjuak is where we all also have our winter, um, our winter opportunity to see the mother and cubs as well. Now we're staying in a premium safari camp, so large 10 by 16 yurts. Um, and again, because there's no ice at this time of year for us to set up our camp, we bring it to the land. So we're on these beautiful beaches, uh, overlooking the mountains. Um, it's quite a beautiful environment to be in. Every day, similar to Kings of the Arctic, we're going out by boat um, to be able to see bowhead, to see polar bears, to see the beautiful icebergs, glaciers, mountains in this area. This area that we're in is just absolutely stunning. There's waterfalls and beaches. Um, 
I feel like this trip is a very well encompassing trip of the Arctic as well as offering some nice warmer temperatures. This image here was um, from a trip that I was on in 2016 um, and these bears, no word of a lie, were about 30 feet from us and they were with us for about an hour and a half. Extremely curious. Um, we typically see anywhere from 10 to 15 bears at this time of year. And also what I like about this time of year is that the bears are swimming a lot, so their coats are very white. They make for great images on this trip, but knowing that this trip is not just photography centric, it has something for everyone. We snorkel on this trip, we hike on this trip, um, we kayak on this trip, there's lots of boating, and as I mentioned, lots and lots of scenery. So there is truly something for everyone. It's, this trip has actually been coined the Patagonia with polar bears. So if you're familiar with Patagonia, it has a similar landscape, although it has polar bears. Here's uh, the same two bears that were in the other image. Um, we were able to obtain some great imagery as they were with us for a couple hours, as I mentioned. Um, here's an image of this couple ki kayaking by an iceberg. So these are some of the um, experiences that you can have for yourself. Um, this area is sort of coined as Iceberg Alley. Uh, so lots of beautiful ice scapes. So when the animals are not around, knowing that the landscape really does fill the time nicely. We get quite close to swimming bears uh, without intruding in on their space. That's always first and foremost. Uh, but with a great lens, this image looks like it was taken just a couple feet away. This gives you an idea of the valleys and the mountains, the icebergs of this beautiful area within the Arctic in the summer. So we're swiftly moving on to autumn. And in the autumn time, this is sort of when the polar bears are concluding their migration and they are coming up the coast of the Hudson Bay, uh, where we have an opportunity to see them on our polar bear migration fly and photo safari. This trip is eight days and seven nights in 2018. We did extend it one day from uh, our previous years. And this trip has dates from October 15th to about November 15th. So we have about um, a one month season at our polar bear cabins on the coast of Hudson Bay. So the routing to get into this camp is that you would fly from where your originating destination to Winnipeg. And then from Winnipeg, we go to Churchill on a scheduled flight. And then from Churchill, we all jump onto a charter flight to our polar bear cabins which are actually in Nunavut on the tundra. So although this trip routes through Churchill, which everyone is familiar with in regards to polar bears in the autumn, but we're going uh, that much more further into Nunavut, right onto the tundra, providing you real true Arctic images. So there's no shrubbery in the background like there would be in Churchill. You'd be getting just pure tundra right on the coast of the Hudson Bay, we also find that because we're more north, we get a lot less bears with the tags in their ears, which makes for better images. We're actually 110 kilometers south of Arviat, Nunavut, and about 116, 120 kilometers north of Churchill. So there's lots of opportunities to see polar bears on this trip. It's sort of coined polar bear alley here. They're really walking up and down the coast right in front of our camp, which is only a stone's throw away from the water. And they're just simply waiting on that sea ice to freeze in the autumn so they can get back on it and begin hunting uh, for the season. Um, there's also an opportunity to see snowy owl, Arctic fox, Arctic hare on this trip and as well as wolverine and maybe even caribou. We're, we're really in the right place at the right time. It's hard to, to say whether October is better or November. We've had great bear viewing on either side of the season. Arctic Kingdom does not offer any shoulder season opportunity. We really believe that we've honed in on the best time to be here. Therefore, all of our opportunities to see polar bears um, is the same on each departure. That being said, if you're looking for more snow in your imagery, then we would recommend the later half of the season rather than the beginning half of the season. Um, but nature is a funny thing, especially nowadays, and so it's, it could work either way. We used an unintrusive electric fence all around of our camp, and 
the thing is with this fence, you hear fence and you think it might be intrusive. It really is not. You're able to situate your camera and lens in such a way that you will not get the fence in your shots and therefore will get some images that appear that you are very close to these bears. So you are, you, but you have a fence that's keeping you safe. We receive about eight to 10 hours of daylight on this trip, but we also get some phenomenal northern lights. And then we'll also sometimes get bears in camp during the evening, during northern lights. So we're getting some really great rare images of polar bears and northern lights on this trip quite often. So here's an image of a mother and cub. So these cubs are likely about a year to two old. They, they are really close to our camp. This picture was taken through the fence, but as I mentioned, you can situate your camera in such a way where you really cannot see it. Um, so it's a really safe environment to get close to these amazing animals. These ground level vantage points lead to these one of a kind images. This one here um, was taken through the fence as well at a very low vantage point. So if you're familiar with Churchill, Churchill product is a lot of tundra buggies. Tundra buggies often use, you can tell that the image of the polar bear was taken on a tundra buggy because you're looking down onto the bear, um, unlike this opportunity here. So this is a very um, unique and rare opportunity to get these vantage points, which would be much different from the images of the masses that get onto the tundra buggies. This is an image to show just how close we can get to the polar bears in a safe manner. It's a very special trip. We, we tend to see somewhere about 10 to 20 bears a week in this camp. So if polar bear photography is what you're after, this ground level vantage point, um, the conclusion of their migration on the Hudson Bay, this is a phenomenal experience. And as I mentioned, we have taken our feedback into consideration and are now offering one more day in camp. So it's one more day enabling you to get some of these great images, um, including the northern lights in the evening, which I mentioned. We also offer a private version of this camp. So if you have um, any want or need to do this trip privately, we have a newly built polar bear cabin that's closer to Arviat, and we use the gateway of Arviat to get in. Um, and we do not utilize the charter flight. We get in via ground transportation. Um, but the private area gets just as many bears. We're just as close to the Hudson Bay. Um, and it's newly constructed, it sleeps four, um, and when you do book a private opportunity, you have a private chef that takes care of you, you have private guides, um, and so it's a really custom experience. So if you're after these images and want the entire camp to yourself, I would love for you to consider our private polar bear cabin uh, with minimum night, three nights stay. And we say minimum three nights stay as you're traveling so far for this experience, we don't want you to come for a shorter amount of time and you not obtain the sightings of the polar bear that you're after. So we really, three nights minimum stay, enabling you to see um, the wildlife in this region at this time of year. So um, it does offer the same wildlife as the the polar bear cabins. So you'll have the opportunity for the snowy owl, the Arctic hare, um, the caribou. We also utilize a similar fence. So in all, for all intents and purposes, it is very similar, um, but just in a more newly constructed cabin in a little bit of a different location, although still on the Hudson Bay in the polar bear alley area. So in this image here, if you look quite closely, um, the mid-drift of the mother, you see a line across her body. That is the fence in the image. So um, just to show you how non-intrusive it really is. And we do get a, a very wide demographic of bears on this trip. They're all essentially leading to this location to get back on the sea ice. So we'll get adolescent males, we'll get grown males, we'll get solo females, we'll get the females with the cubs, and the cubs are going to be varying in age. They could be anywhere from a few months old to three years old when they are very close to departing from their mother. Uh, this is really a great trip to get a lot of polar bear images 
in a really um, comfortable environment because um, we are in camp pretty much the entire time. So you can leave your tripod outside and go inside of our lounge area and remain warm until there's the next polar bear that attempts to come to camp. Uh, when we get low bear activity in camp, we do leave camp and go on tundra hikes. So for an hour or two going out on the land, being able to look for bears that might be just a bit further out from our camp. Um, this is an example of some imagery that you'd be able to capture at sunset. Um, so this this trip, unlike our flow edge trips, which are 24 hours of sunlight, you have every opportunity of light on this trip. So that early morning sunrise, you have the sunset, you have the twilight, you have the northern lights in the evening. So just a lot of opportunity for images of this, uh, for images on this trip, and that's why we call it a photo safari. So now I'd like to dive into the accommodation styles. I've been mentioning them throughout the presentation with some reference that I'd be showing you pictures near the end. So the premium safari camp could be on ice or it could be on land. In this image here, this is on land, but showing you those 10 by 16 cathedral style yurts. We do offer shared washrooms with hot water sinks, showers, and a dry flush toilet. Generally, we'll have two in each camp. Um, it seems to be working nicely. We've been doing this over the past 18 years and we haven't had to break up a bathroom fight as of yet. So um, it, I know sometimes there's hesitation over sharing the bathroom, but in this environment, um, you're not showering every day. And, and if you are, knowing that it is available for you um, and when you lock that door, you're private inside. It's not um, dorm room style where there's multiple people in the bathroom. It would only be private to you. This is the premium safari camp on ice. Um, again, we utilize this in the springtime on our flow edge opportunities in May and June. Um, and as well as, yeah, sorry, just May and June on the Narwhal and Polar Bear Safari and Great Migrations of the Northwest Passage Safari. Um, but then we also use the premium safari camp on land on our August trip, the Polar Bears and Glaciers of Baffin Island trip. So we are on about 10 feet of ice here. Um, so it is a very safe environment. Um, we do this, uh, we've been doing this for many, many years. We've been bringing people back from the Arctic since 1999. Um, so this is a very safe way to travel in the Arctic. As I mentioned, um, the Inuit have been doing this for thousands of years. Here's a great aerial shot of our premium safari camp on land. And um, you can just see how, you know, there's no hotels in this environment. This is likely one of the most remote environments you'll ever travel to. And that being said, you probably will have one of the nicest views you've ever had in any accommodation on a vacation ever. They are humble on the inside, though. Um, that is because we have to bring all of the contents of our camp to the remote area, either via boat or via snowmobile. So we have to be selective in what we bring, although it is still very comfortable. We're using these full-size beds. Um, we're also using memory foam. We're using great linens. We're using um, down-filled duvets, down-filled pillows. So it is a very comfortable stay, although quite humble. There is blackout um, windows within the yurt as well. So when you're on one of the trips that offer 24 hours of sunlight, um, it does block the light in your in your yurt. There is also electrical charging stations within the yurts allowing you to charge all of your electronics. Um, we use a generator while in camp. Uh, generally the generator will be um, turned off around 11, 11.30 um, and turned on as early as 7 a.m. So there's lots of time to be able to charge. This would be the um, premium safari camp dining lounge. So this is um, an area where we would have our meals, where we would be able to do some lectures in the evening, uh, where we can sit back and read. We bring a lot of um, Arctic content books with us while um, up in the high Arctic. Um, so this would be the communal place for everyone to sort of come and relax outside of their yurt. Now this here is an image of our tented safari camp on land and we utilize this for um, the July Kings of the Arctic trip but we also utilize it in the spring uh, for our spring polar bears and iceberg trip and that one is actually situated on the ice. 
These are called Arctic ovens. They're very well insulated. What the idea is is that they penetrate the warmth from the sun and they retain it well. So we actually have to use less heating mechanism than the premium safari camp um, while using these tents. They're very comfortable. So just another image here and a recap of where we have the camp situated both on land and on ice. So kings of the Arctic in the summer and spring polar bears and icebergs of Baffin in the spring. Here is the image of the camp on ice. And the next slide is just an interior. So it's a scaled down version of the Arctic yurt, but we're still utilizing those same comfortable beds and the memory foam, the duvets, the down filled pillows. Um, so it's, in my opinion, it's just as comfortable. It's just not as big. Um, and in my opinion, it's a little bit more insulated, but for the premium safari camp trips, the insulation isn't as important as we are in a, a warmer time of year within the Arctic. And these uh, tented camps will also have the electricity inside. Um, so if you are cold, knowing that, that you still have basically all the same features. So the polar bear cabins that we use for the polar bear migration fly and photo safari, um, it's actually um, an old polar bear hunting camp. And now Arctic Kingdom um, has this for a polar bear observation camp. And here is a great aerial shot of it. And you can see how close we are to the Hudson Bay. And we're literally a stone's throw. So we set the electric fence right around that compound. Um, we can accommodate up to eight guests on this trip in four cabins. And each cabin offers its own ensuite bathroom. It's the only trip that we offer ensuite bathroom on. And the bathroom includes a hot water shower, a dry flush toilet, as well as a water basin. So an image of um, one of the cabins for our clients with the northern lights above. And here is the interior. We have the dining lounge cabin on this trip. So um, from this vantage point, you can see more the lounge area. And then just behind us in this image would be a table um, in which we enjoy all of our meals on. This lounge is open all times of the day, um, and this is where you could sort of receipt you when there's no bears in camp. And um, sometimes we'll see them through the windows, and then that's when we know we can go out and start enjoying polar bear photography. For our mother and cubs trip in the wintertime in March, we go to Wapusk National Park and we stay in the newborn cubs lodge. And here is an aerial image of that. So this lodge can accommodate up to 20 guests. There is no uh, showers in this facility. It is uh, quite remote, but still quite comfortable. Um, it is quads and dorm style um, sleeping arrangements. And then here is an image of the lounge where you can kick back at the end of the day to read, review your images, speak with other clients as well. Um, and it is shared bathrooms on this trip as well, um, but very comfortable considering the temperature outside. Um, this is a lodge opportunity, therefore it's not camping and it might be a bit more appealing to people at this time of year. Now here are the images of the newly built private polar bear cabin that I mentioned before. This ca uh, cabin sleeps up to four people comfortably in the uh, bed configuration of a queen size and then a bunk bed. Um, but everything's you know, brand new. You have your private chef, you have your private guides, um, you have your private bathroom here as well. Um, so if you are interested or know anyone who has a small group or is very avid into photography that would like a private opportunity, please do not hesitate to contact us um, after this webinar today. So how to book. You would speak to myself, Natasha, or my colleague, Allison, and we'd be able to answer any questions that you have, no matter how big or how small. We both work um, 
from 9.30 to 5.30 Eastern Standard Time, Monday to Friday. Oftentimes we're available in the evening hours or morning hours upon request if you would like to have a call. Uh, we like to get back to you all emails within 24 hours, if not immediately. Uh, we understand that this is a nuanced travel experience and that you might have a lot of questions enabling you to make a decision for yourself, but this is all we do. We're very confident in, um, in what we do and we would like to relay that confidence to you um, so do not hesitate to contact us at any time and it will be our pleasure to assist you so folks today I discussed how to you can see a polar bear in every season with Arctic Kingdom and I really truly hope I was able to educate you well with our product um, so thank you for your time today happy holiday season to you and yours and I hope to see you again on the next webinar be well